What's up guys, Captain Ron here. Uh, starting my series and one of the big things that you're gonna need to know whenever you're gonna go into the automotive industry is you're gonna have to know how to break down a tire, how to dismount, mount, and balance it. So the machine I'm using right now, this is a Hunter Auto 34S. Um, I'll put a link in the description if you guys wanna see it, uh, see specs and everything like that on it. But this is the tire machine we have. I know it's more fancy than probably what most shops are gonna have but uh, the process of doing it is pretty much going to be the same. So I'm going to go through step by step with you guys how to go about dismounting, mounting, and how to go about balancing the tire. Alright, so basically the first thing you're going to want to do, obviously, get your tire off your vehicle and you're going to want to make sure that you take any weights that you have on it off. So any of the weights that are the pound on style weights like these, you're going to want to make sure to take them off just because you don't want your wheels um, or your breaker bar or anything like that that you guys use to dismount the tire. You don't want them catching on that because it could possibly damage your machine. So make sure you take them off and put them in the trash. So with our setup we have, it's pretty easy and it's pretty uh, easy on the technician as well. So there's a couple pedals back here. The first one I'm going to push is probably the best one because it actually brings the tire up to you. So you're going to bring the tire up, you're going to move it over to the pedestal, and you're going to lower it down. Easy as that. So there is a little nub that you want to get in one of the lug nut holes so that way you can line it up and line it up with the center hole in the middle then you've got this that pretty much secures the tire to the machine you put that in there push down and a quarter turn and that locks it in there taking this down will actually secure the tire to the pedestal itself that way it's not moving on you so your next step you're going to do is you're gonna take your stem out to get all the air out of the tire. You don't ever wanna break a break down a air-filled tire just because it's gonna possibly explode on you um, or kick back the machine and cause damage to the machine. So take your valve stem out and let all the air out. Okay, so once you guys have your air out of your tire, um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure to use the lubricant that they provide. They have give you a bucket over here with a brush for you to actually use this to lube up the tire and lube up the machine. I personally take a little bit of water and add that to it just because it makes it a little more, little more slick. And I will also spray down the tire a little bit as well just to give that extra lubricant because with this machine, wetter is better. So make sure you guys get everything all nice and lubed up around the rim with the tool head and the two breaker wheels that are on the top and on the bottom. Now the nice thing about this machine is that with the older style machines you had a real good chance of breaking your valve stem uh, sensor. With this one you don't really have so much that much of an issue. Everything is pretty much preset and there's also controls on the side for you to be able to adjust the machine as needed. But none of these components really come in contact with your TPMS sensor. So there's a lot less chance of you breaking off a TPMS sensor, um, even when breaking down the bead. There's some of the old ones where you actually had to move the, move the arm in the way and break the bead like the old style. Those, if you put a sensor in front of it, you're breaking it. This one here, there's about a 90% chance you won't break it. So what you're gonna do is you wanna line up your valve stem according to the pattern out here. So it's going to go right pretty much in line with these two wheels. You're going to bring your top wheel down and you want it to be just on the inside of the rim. You want to take it down to where the lip of that wheel is just underneath the rim and then there's an uh, indent button and it will shove it up underneath that rim. Once you do that, start spinning your tire slowly and start stepping this down slowly. And what will happen is that it will gradually break that bead. As you saw, I just went right past the valve stem and I'll do it again because it's not even coming close to it. Do the same thing with your bottom wheel, which is down under here. 
you get it to where it's just underneath the rim and this is kind of hard to see but um, you got a little mirror and you kind of just take some practice but it's pretty much the same process And now we have both, both of our beads broken to where we can dismount the tire. So the next step is getting the tire off. And again, you're gonna line up your valve stem according to the chart, and you're gonna take your tool head and you're gonna shove it down into the tire. And just keep going until you hear that pop. I know it wasn't a very loud pop, but it's basically this arm getting down underneath the lip of the tire. And then you pull it right back up until it's over the rim. Take your little accessory tool, shove it in the tire, and start spinning the tire, and it will just peel that tire right off the rim. All the way back around to the center. Use your tool head. Make sure that bead's pop. But use your tool head to pull that tire up and use your bottom breaker wheel just until you start seeing this, the wheel and then you're going to indent it. Slowly start moving it around, get your tool head out of the way, and your tire's off. That easy. Now for putting your tire back on, you want to make sure that you don't have a um, one directional tire. You want to make sure that you have the inside and outside properly identified. Um, for this tire, it really doesn't make too much of a difference. Both of them are pretty much the same. So again, but if you do have one that is a uh, one directional tire, make sure you get it on there the right way. Again, we're going to take some of that lubricant. We're going to make sure we get the tire all nice and lubed up on both sides. Don't be stingy with it, a lot helps. And then you're going to want to make sure to position your sensor accordingly. So top mount and bottom mount beads are in a certain location. So we're going to put that one there. We're going to throw our tire up here and we're going to put the tool head back down in the same position we had it when we were taking it off. You don't want to make sure you get it too deep. And then basically you're just going to kind of guide that tire on. That one's done. We're going to bring our TPMS sensor back over where we need it, which is basically pointing at us. Now when you go to put it on, there's a little channel in this tool head. You want to make sure to get the tire in that channel and then just kind of spin it on as much as you can. Use your pedal, take it all the way around, and it's on. Move your tool head out of the way, bring your sensor back around to you, grab your air hose, there's a third pedal for the air. Now, that one almost didn't do it, but you can use the platform to raise your tire up if you need to to help set the bead, but this one actually caught. Once you have all your beads set, you can put your valve stem core back in it. And you can either finish airing the tire up here or you can go over to the next step, which is the balancer, and finish airing it up over there. But once you get everything done and set, you're gonna loosen this, pull this up, and it's basically backwards from putting it on. Put your center securing piece there, lift the tire up, slide it over to the arm, set it back down, and you're ready to head over to the balancer. Alright, so when you guys go to balance a tire, it's going to depend on what kind of balancer you have. The one we have right now, this is a Hunter Hammerhead. Um, it does road force balancing and your regular typical balancing as well, but it's also a smart balancer as well. Um, so the first thing you got to do is that they've got these little adapters that go in here and there's a whole range of different sizes from 
your tiniest tires all the way up to your biggest tires. So what you're gonna need to do is find a coupler that'll actually fit in the center of your rim and work. So that one obviously doesn't. You flip it around though, but it does. So you'll put that side in, pull all the way to the side, take your rim, and you'll put it up on the balancer, make sure it's sitting on that coupler, and then you've got this piece here to hold it on. The nice thing about this, instead of having to sit here and crank on it, if you double tap this pedal, it makes it spin. And it'll actually thread it on for you. And then all you gotta do is make sure it's tight. Now when you go to balance these, they're gonna want you to road force them, just so you can find out if the tire is actually in the right spot. So you'll hit road force, and then you've got a little air hose here, Pop it off and it'll ask you what pressure you want to set these at. So you'll want to make sure you check your vehicle, make sure what size, or excuse me, what air pressure you want to be at and set it accordingly. We're going to set this one to 36 because that's pretty typical. Pop that on there and it will automatically air it up for you to 36 PSI. Almost there. Okay, once you hear the three beeps and the tire turns green, you're at 36 PSI and ready to roll. So now it's just like any other tire balancer. You lower the hood, shows you a graphic of the, of the wheel spinning. <clears throat> Measures profile, slowdown, and now it's doing road force. So it's actually testing the stiffness of the tire to see if we need to adjust it anywhere to make it ride better on the vehicle. And as you can see, we've already got our weights that we have to put on. And this one's actually pretty decent. Uh, we're gonna turn it to light truck because we're working off of a uh, Liberty. And it is at eight road force, which is really, really good. So we're gonna grab our weights. Being a steel rim, we're gonna use steel rim weights. So we need a one ounce and we need a one and a half ounce. So, if you press the weight, sorry, if you press the weight, it will automatically move the wheel for you and put a line right exactly where you need to put that weight. So there's no second guessing on where you're putting it. It smart does it for you. Press the other one. It goes to the other side. Where's the line? Oh, sorry, it put it, it put it as a uh, inside weight. So we're gonna move it as an outside weight since it is a steel rim. So it did change my weight though. We went from a one and a half to a one. So again, line it up, hammer it home. Once you get done, spin the tire again to check it. And if everything's good like it should be, we're green and good to go. Well guys, that's about all I've got for you today. I hope that this video helps you guys understand um, how to go about breaking down tires, how to go about balancing and putting on new tires, uh, which is one of the key things you're going to need to know being in an automotive dealership or an independent shop. So hopefully this helps you guys out get you guys some information and is going to be the one of the first videos in the series about how to be a new technician so stay tuned for future videos we're going to do another one over a uh, car inspection so you guys can know what exactly to look for when you do a car inspection we're going to do another one over brake inspections so that way you guys can know what to look for for that and if you guys have any questions or comments or want to know a video you want to see in the future um, by all means, leave me comments below, let me know, and I'll do my best to make a video about that for you. So, Alright guys, it's also time for giveaway. So, what we got for giveaway, for those of you guys that did enter, we got the Blue Point set that was given away, or given to me, to give away, by Mr. JRC54. So, big shout out to him, make sure you guys go check him out over at his channel, uh, look up uh, JRC54, or check out the comments or the uh, description below. I'll put a link to his channel over there. So, got my phone set up over here. 
Got a random number generator put up with 84 numbers in it because I had 84 comments on the video. So, I did this once before off camera just to make sure it worked. It ended up ending up on number 11, which happened to be JRC54. And he can't win his stuff back. So, we're going to do it again, and I'm going to do it on camera this time. So, let me get situated. Let me get over here to where you guys can see the camera nice and neat, or not see the phone. We're going to hit this a bunch of times. Round and round and round she goes, and we're going to stop right now. Number four. So the fourth comment that was ever made on this video is one, two, three, four. Mr. Eric. Mr. Eric Pidochi. Pidochi? Pachotsky. Sorry. Eric Pachotsky. I'm going to assume that's right. So make sure you send me an email. The Captain Ron. That's T H E C P T N R O N at gmail.com. Send me your mailing address and uh, let me know that you won and then I will get that shipped out to you just as soon as I possibly can but congratulations on winning that Eric thanks for supporting me make sure you guys go check out JRC54 as well and uh, also while we're tagging stuff Toolhead's great if you guys haven't seen me talk about that go watch my last video but make sure you go check this out too 35 bucks a month a tool heads crate gets shipped directly to you. It's like winning a contest every week. Granted, you gotta pay for it, but prizes every every month. Sorry, not week, month. Winning every month. So make sure you go check that out. T O O L H E A D Z C R A T E dot com. Link in the description below. Make sure you check that out as well. Until next time, this is Captain Ron signing off. We'll see you later.